Look, as a number of you had, because you've um, you've told me so, uh, if you've had a look at Janet Albertson's piece today from the Australian newspaper, you can read it at leightonsmith.co.nz, it will spook you. Now, she is not alone, of course, as you will read in her attitude to this. There is much that we do not know that's system, which, by the way, I have mentioned on a, on a number of occasions. And let me just, just brief you on this. Many years ago, a, a Swiss person living here sent me a copy of the of the government booklet on how it on how it works to my discredit I never read it and I put it aside but I came across it the other day and it's still waiting for me to read but this morning I decided was a good time to be talking with you so tell me your thoughts on the Swiss system with regard to its possible introduction into New Zealand well thanks Leighton we couldn't of course adopt the whole Swiss system as such but there is a growing discontent, discontent nationwide, and not only in New Zealand, as you know, among voters, that they're effectively disenfranchised from the whole area of government, that we have no brakes on the political ambitions of individuals or even minority parties in Parliament. And that the people in between elections, the people of a country, have very little say in what's happening. And there's a feeling, I think, a recognition more and more that other countries are doing things better. Now, the movement to address this by launching referenda has been very well intentioned, but there's a kind of weariness about referenda now because people know that governments in power have absolutely no intention of taking any notice of them. Mm. And there's a far more effective, effective method of controlling the ambitions of what you could call the political class as against the whole democracy, and that is the whole concept of 100 days. The Swiss, of course, have had a democratic system for 400 years. It's quite different from ours. They don't have the kind of top-down legislation that we have, whereby members of minority parties can do deals with the leaders of the major parties. And we have legislation inflicted on us that the country overwhelmingly rejects, such as the anti-smacking legislation of recent infamy, where over 80 80 percent of the country rejected it. Mm. Helen Clark took no notice. John Key took no notice. Deals were done behind the scenes. And I think this has been the pivotal point in making people look at alternative systems. Though the Swiss had a 400-year democracy, in 1869, from memory, they decided they didn't have it quite well enough. And what they wanted to do was to fire a shot across the bowels of any politicians coming from the left wing, such as Sue Bradford or from the far right. And so they put a halt. They said Parliament can do what it likes, but whatever law they pass can't come into effect for 100 days. And this is the notion that we've launched here, and I'm convening it with a group of very good people. It's simply a grass ring, a grass on right. grassroots movement with no affiliation to any political party. It simply represents ordinary people's concern that we're having inflicted on us from right across the spectrum. When you say any legislation, do you mean all legislation? And, uh, well, the possibility is there, but it doesn't put a halt to government as such. And there are three criteria, of course. That basically, Parliament can, through MMP, do deals, and it can pass any legislation it likes, but there's a 100 days scrutiny period. Now, what's happened in Switzerland, it's been quite effective, of course, because it doesn't hold up the whole, the whole role of government, because most legislation is unexceptionable, in Switzerland at least now, because they've exercised this control over their Parliament parliamentarians for a number of years mm. and in fact they have a far more representative system at the top than we have but there are provisions for allowing the government to act in times of emergency which is crucial for a country and what we would need here in this country too is is a requirement for the media to examine both sides of an issue to give it equal balance the mainstream media is taxpayer funded in various areas they should fulfill that obligation they haven't in areas like the whole global warming beat up where gradually our people are realising that we have been subject to enormous rot and it's going to cost the country enormously. Now, what I'm actually saying is that this 100 days is a political instrument that can effectively concentrate attention on specific government undesirable politics, and this is what it does. Now, the Swiss have an advantage over us in that, of course, if I said, you know, to anyone who's the president of Switzerland, mm -hmm. they yep. could probably not answer, because they have a council of seven and they rotate them. You could never get a Helen Clark digging in for the period she did and contriving the damage that the past Labour government has done, and National doesn't show any signs of improving upon, because they rotate the position of leader of the country among that council of seven. 
who represent all major parties. Now, to work for something like this would require huge constitutional change, but we don't need to. All that 100 days does, really, is it serves notice that the government really has to be very careful about the kind of legislation it introduces if the people and the country are going to disagree with it. And that's probably its most effective it's the most effective point of all. All right, so that that is, that's the part of the Swiss system that you uh, are, are promoting. Yes, it's not a, it's it's not an impediment to good government. It simply serves as a warning that the country is watching what the government is doing. Now, at the moment, an, an enormous number of people feel that there's no point in voting. They don't know who to vote for. They think we're out of the frying pan to the fire, and they're pretty well right. This time, for example, you wouldn't go have got Helen Clark or John Key supporting Sue Bradford. The initial polling would have been done. The country is over 100% against you. We're not going to bring this legislation in because after the 100-day scrutiny is over, then a referendum will be launched. And that's the next step. The referendum is important, the binding citizens' referendum, but it doesn't come first. The 100 days comes first. Pass what you would like, but... We will see if we agree with it, and if we don't, we will call for a referendum. All right, let's put this into into literal terms. Uh, they, the government passes the anti-smacking bill. Right. And uh, it, it sits in abeyance for 100 days, yes. during which time someone can challenge it through a call for a referendum or what? Yes. During that time, people... People who show dissatisfaction can get together and they can advertise the fact they're going to call for a referendum. Now, people won't be calling for a referendum on every, every um, legislation the government passes. We are all busy people. It will tend to be the ones that the country or the country senses that something is happening that's deeply undemocratic or dangerous to the future of the country. When you get 50,000 signatures, the referendum has to be initiated. So all you need is nothing like the over 300,000 or the ridiculous figure that the people opposing the anti-smacking legislation... When would, you, when would you have the referendum then? I think it has to be within three months. I think you get that 100 days. Parliament's obliged to pass it. I'd have to actually check that more. I haven't got my finger... My, um, but it's the principle that's involved. It's the principle. I haven't got the specific information at my finger. Let me, let me throw a couple of um, uh, objective-type questions at sure. you, or at least objectionable questions to this. Um, you can't run a country like this, point one. Point two, or question two, and this is the real one, I suppose, people, um, ordinary people, don't understand how government works and what needs to be done, uh, and not enough people care and therefore you're opening yourself up to influence by pressure groups. I think it's exactly the opposite. I was amused to hear you say you can't run a country like this. Switzerland's run their country like this, and it's the most successful democracy in the world. People can make mistakes, of course, but it's up to the Swiss people, and they have the ability to reverse them when they do. So it does happen. The second thing is you can run a country like this because it's the actual effectiveness of the ability of people to scrutinise the legislation within that 100 days, which gives them the chance to feel that they can make a difference. At the moment, yes, people are very apathetic, well, some are, but there's a deep-rooted anger. I was discussing a particular question with, and I think I mentioned in my article, that I feel more common sense when people involved in running their own businesses and trades and up against the deterrent effect of government and the enormous amount of compl- um, well, requirements and consents and so on that they have to actually adhere to, which are an impediment to them controlling their lives and running their businesses. Right. Which... Are you a subscriber to, as I am, the fact that more people will take greater interest in politics and in individual questions, if you like, with regard to politics, if they are given the the, the, the need and the, and, the, and, the, and the ability to do so? Well, yes, and that's exactly what I was just saying then. You're dead right, Leighton. I was talking to someone who runs his own business successfully, and I mentioned a particular question that I was concerned about, and he said, oh, you have to laugh. And I said, it's worse than that. I said, it's not funny. It's deeply troubling. And he said, I know. He said, it's so bad that if I thought about it, I would be so angry that I couldn't carry on with my daily business. And that's what a lot of New Zealanders think. They think the country is being taken to the cleaners over a number of specific issues. They know that they have no say. And the whole point of this effectiveness of of, um, the ability to just say, wait a minute, we're going to look at this, is the deterrent factor. And that's enormously important. All right. Have you read, by any chance, Janet Albertson's column today in The Australian? No, no. You I can haven't. you can access it. I've I've posted it at LeightonSmith.co.nz. Thank you. That's the reason that I uh, thought that I well. That's the reason I decided to talk to you today. Go and and read it, Amy, and get spooked. 
Oh, thank you. It's very interesting. Actually, this is this movement is paralleled, illustrated. Joe Perpetuity has been writing it on Perth, and there's now a new book out called Twelve Months to a New Britain, raising the same issue that we could have a far more direct democracy, that we don't have it, that in fact we have control even of parliamentarians by the leaders of the party. All right. Your your move to claim back New Zealand, um, I would be grateful if you would keep me informed of it. Without hay fever. Now the sushi value of the day, the vegetarian roll. Cucumber, red pepper, avocado.